Hello, my name is Derek Brooks with IdeaCom Networks out of Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here today to give you a quick training session on the Mitel Connect Director software that administers your phone system. Now, by quick, I mean there's a lot of information to cover on this phone system. A lot of things you can do, a lot of stuff to administer. So I'm just going to give you a quick, basic overview of how to administer your phone system. Add, remove users reset passwords, and so on. Now if we covered it all, the My Voice Connect System Administration Guide is almost 700 pages long, 696 pages. So we would be here quite some time if I were to go over all this with you. Probably a couple of days. But uh, as I said today, I'm just going to give you a basic overview of the phone system and how to administer it. Okay. So upon login, you're first going to see the dashboard. The dashboard is going to show you information on your call volume, bandwidth utilization, feature usage, quality, and so on, right? At the very top of the screen, you're going to see alerts, connections, trunk groups, bandwidth, voice quality, appliances, and so on. Alerts. Now, if you have an alert here, it'll turn red. You click on the, let's say we have a, an alert on appliances. We're going to click appliances, and it's going to show the alert here. Now, keep in mind, this alert will stay here and turn this red until you delete it. So if I've got an alert in here that's six months old, this will be red until I go into appliances and clear the alert that's red to turn it back to green. So just FYI, okay? Now within the Mito Connect Director, there's several tabs. You got the wrench icon, that's your administration tab. The gear icon is going to be system. A little bar graph is reporting. You've got documentation, connection to the Mito Dock Center. Maintenance as well as diagnostics. Now I'm not going to go over all of this with you, just the basics that you need to administer your system. Now the gear icon is probably the most important thing you'll need to know, the gear or administration tab. This is where you administer users, your trunks, call flow features, and so on, okay? The gear icon is where you look at licensing. And the maintenance tab is kind of where you can look at the status of your equipment as well as connectivity on the network. That's basically all I'm going to go over in this training session. So let's go ahead and get started with the gear or the wrench icon for administration. If you click the wrench icon and click users, it's going to list all the users in your phone system. I can scroll up and down and pick my user, or I can hit the magnifying glass icon and I can search by first name, last name, extension, site, user group, and so on. So if I wanted to select my phone here, I can type in Derek, right? Find my phone. 5721. Now, if someone's going to take my place in this role or in this office, right, I can go in and change my name. Here, this is how you would change your username or user's name across the phone. All right, if I wanted to change a person's extension, I'd change it here. Email address goes here. This is for voicemail to email. Wave files. Client username. This is how you would log into the My Connect client. This is where the username is that you change. Include in system dial by name directory does this just as it says. If I want this user to show up in the directory of my phone system, you would check it. If you don't want it to show up, you would uncheck it. Make extension private. It makes it to where no one can see it. All right, caller ID overwrite. This is if your carrier gives you control of the caller ID, you can basically manipulate what the caller, caller ID is. Uh, if the carrier does not give you the control, basically all outgoing calls will show your main company's phone number. Now, us having control over the carrier caller ID, we can actually put, like, this is my direct dial extension, 2485721. Instead of outgoing calls saying the main company's phone number, they're going to say my main line. That way, if a user misses a call from me, if I call outside the building and they have a missed call on their cell phone, they can call back in directly to my direct line at my desk. Licensing, licenses, extension to mailbox, extension only, mailbox only, does what it says. Extension to mailbox gives you an actual extension in a mailbox. Extension only doesn't give you a mailbox. Mailbox only doesn't give you extensions, just gives you a mailbox. Connect client allows you to use the connect client. Phone only is just for phones. Work group agent, supervisor, and so on applies those licensing features to that user. User groups is basically where I can set 
up a specific set of users to do one thing that another set of users can which I'll go over here shortly with you. A site is the location of the phone if you have multiple locations. IP phone, that's actually your IP phone, your physical phone you're attached to. So the MAC address of my phone is 4924. Now if I was changing the phone out, basically I would just click the drop down box and find the MAC address of the phone I wanted to change the user to. Okay. Scrolling down you'll see client password. This is the connect client login password. If someone forgets it, this is where you reset it at. Telephony, this is where you change features, telephony features like call stack depth is how many calls you can take at one call, one time. Ringtone, you can manually change ringtone and wallpapers. Alright, voicemail, this is where you change the voicemail password for a user. Specifically the user here, 5721. This is where you'd also set up voicemail to email. You just select attach wave file, make sure the email address is collect, correct, and hit save. Routing, this is call routing. You go to availability states, and I can manually change my phone availability state or another user's phone availability state with this drop down box here. Remember, you always have to hit save anytime you make changes for them to apply. Now, each tab in the availability states has options for call routing, like available, in a meeting, out of office, do not disturb, vacation, and custom. If I wanted to change how a user's phone acts whenever it's in out of office mode, I click the out of office tab and go down and change the call routing associated with that user. Membership is going to show me if I'm a part of any membership, like uh, work groups or hunt groups, they all show up here. All right, let's go look at programmable buttons. Programmable buttons, this is where I would set up buttons on the phone. So let's go to my secondary phone here. Basically, this is where you would you could do set you would set up a page button. You can do a speed dial button. It's all right here. User groups. Let's say if I wanted a specific set of users in my office to be able to call long distance, what I would do is create a long distance user group, like IdeaCom long distance, right? Give them long distance access. Now I'd create another user group, like IdeaCom local only, right? Give them only access to call local only, local calls only. What I would do is go back into the user. Once those groups are created, like here, and I would change the user group here, which was not one created, but it would say local only if I didn't want to make long distance phone calls. That's basically user groups in a nutshell. Class of service, this is where you change the left new features. You allow or turn on certain features, turn them off. Call permissions, voicemail. Trunks is where you're going to see your lines. If you go to trunk groups and you have a PRI, you go to trunk groups and trunk groups again, you're going to see PRIs listed. Like here we have IdeaCom PRI through Comcast. If I hit inbound, it's going to show me how many digits the carrier is sending me and where any, any incoming calls from that PRI are going to route to which is going to route to our main auto attendant here at 5701, okay? Now, let's say, for instance, I have direct lines. Uh, if you purchase a new PRI, they usually come with 20, a block of 20 phone numbers, right? And I want to route one of those numbers, like my direct line, 20, 5721, ending in 5721, to a specific phone, right? I, you do that through the DENIS map. You click Edit DENIS. Scroll down, and I'm going to find 5721, right? I can use my little magnifying glass, type in 5721. That's the last four digits that my carrier is going to send me, right? Go to IdeaCom PRI. Receive digits because the carrier is sending us four digits on this instance. We'll have a display name here and an extension or destination it's going to route to. That's basically saying if anybody calls 615-248-5721, route to Derek Brooks at 5721. Now if someone calls the main number, it's going to route to the main auto attendant coming in your building, right? Now if there's a number not on your DNS mapping, it's just going to go back to this trunk group by default, uh, trunk group inbound destination. So basically if the number is specified in the DNS mapping, it's going to go to where you tell it to go to. If it's not specified in the DNS mapping, it's going to go to your main location or your default destination. Okay? Alright, telephones. 
These show the list of telephones that have been booted and on your system. Now keep in mind, if you booted a phone and got a replacement phone, that phone's still here. You have to come in here and periodically clean it up. Uh, IP address phone mapping. This is if you have multiple locations. Let's say I have a site in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, right? I got four locations. If you go in here, you can actually specify an IP address map for the server to look for phones on or the phones to boot up and find the server. It just makes it much simpler. The uh, only time you would need this is, is if you had multiple sites. Otherwise, without it, it basically looks default at the headquarters site for the phones and may not function as it, sh as it should. So it's always a good practice if you have multiple sites to set up IP phone address maps for all the locations. All right, options. Just FYI, the IP phone announcements, like on the front of our phones, they say the Econ Networks when they boot up. And on the screen right now, under my name, it says Ideacom Networks. This is where you would change that app. Appliances and servers. This is where you would go to platform equipment. This is where you add and remove appliances. Something you probably should need to do, but just showing you where that location is. Features. This is going to be several call function options. Call control. System directory. For example, system directory. If you click system directory. It's going to show you everyone on the phone system, right? Now, by default, a new phone system is only going to have members that are a part of the system. Members or users that have phones, right? Let's say I wanted to add someone to the directory, right? I go up here and hit new. First name, let's say we have an IT support help desk, right? Put their phone number in. 1888. Help me. <laughs> and I hit save. That's going to put that in your phone system directory. That'll be accessible from the Mytel Connect client software as well as your phone, physical phone directory on your phone. So just an FYI there, just because they're not in the phone system or on the phone system, you can still add people to the directory for your employees. It's a pretty cool function. Auto tenant, this is where you would create, build, or modify, or change auto tenants. Now auto tenant itself, there's a lot to talk about, so I'd actually separate that into a different training video. But auto tenant is basically when you call into XYZ company and you get, hey, press one for this, two for that, three for that, right? And it operates on a schedule. What it says is based on a schedule. That's what this is. If I wanted to create a new auto tenant, I'd hit new. If I wanted to maintain one or edit one, I'd click here and edit it. You got your on hours, got the script of what you're talking about, what they do, what each button does, off hours, holiday, and so on, okay? All right, call control. Account codes, if you were to set up, is basically if you were to set up account codes to dial out long distance. Like if I uh, had a certain set of users I wanted to be able to walk up to a phone, any phone, and press in a four digit code and be able to call out and dial long distance. That's what account codes are for. Hunt groups, let's say I have three people that whenever I call the main line of my company, I want three people's phones to ring. That's what a hunt group is. Basically, you would create create a hunt group by hitting the new button or you could copy another hunt group and create one as well so say for instance here we got a sales hunt group 5704 go down it shows me the members in that hunt group I can add and remove members by select them on the left and move them to the right simple as that paging groups is for paging if I wanted a paging system set up among my phones this is how I set which users are going to hear that page Route points. A route point is basically given an external number an internal extension. Let's say my CEO's cell phone. We want it easily accessible to call him, right? What we would do is go in here and create a new route point, apply the person or user's phone number, and we'd assign it with a user extension. So like my cell phone here, for instance, 3334. If I were to walk up to any phone in my building and dial 3334, it's going to call my cell phone. It pretty much takes that extension and routes it off the phone system to a cell phone or external number. Okay. Music on hold. Get music on fold hold files here. This is where they're listed. You upload them here, play them, test them, right? Defaults. Internal calls file-based music defaults are here voicemail 
It's going to be voicemail options, distribution list. Work groups is similar to Hunt Group, but you can do more with them. Basically, you can log in, log out. Uh, you have to have specific licenses to do that. But you can log in users, log out users, just like, like a customer service help desk type group or a call center environment. Works perfect. You can have work group mailbox attached as well. Schedules, this is where you administer schedules for your auto tenants and your hunt groups. Just like auto tenants, hunt groups as well have schedules. Those schedules can be changed here. Your on-hour schedules are going to be located here. Holiday schedules here. Custom schedules. The client, this is where you create toolbars for your MyTel Connect client. Again, it's a lot to discuss. Probably create a different training session just for that. System, this is where you build additional sites. Local prefixes, it's basically saying, hey, if this area code and prefix is dialed, it's local. All right, licensing would actually be on the system icon or the system tab, the gear icon. If you click the gear icon, go to licenses, license requirements, shows you basically what you paid for on the right and what you have configured on the left. And if you're out of compliance, like we are right here, uh, we've got 45 phones configured, only 42 licenses purchased. So we've probably got some test users set up here and we need to remove them. Now if you're out of compliance, it's going to say due to license violation, access director will be locked and it'll start at 45 days. It'll give you 45 days to get back in compliance. So that means basically that we have 31 days left to come here and delete the extensions or users that we didn't pay for our system will lock out. License keys are where these license keys are applied at. Administrator permissions. You click administrators. It's going to show you the list of administrators for the phone system. Roles. This is where you set up specific roles. Let's say I wanted a user to only be able to log in and do reporting. I can go here and create a new role with reporting, or right here there's actually already one for reporting. So when I go to administrators and I set up a new user for administrator, I hit new, type in the user's extension, and then give them the reporting role. There it is. Hit save, and they'll be able to log into the phone system and do stuff, but the only thing they can do is associate it with the reporting tab. Okay. User logins. This is going to show you the login history of the phone system. It'll show you who logged in and made what changes. Security. This is where you can change your password policy. Minimum password strength, reuse limit, how often it expires, and so on. All right. The downloads tab. This is where you download the Connect Client, for instance. If you were going to spin up a virtual edge gateway, all that is here. All right, your documentation tab is pretty handy. If you click that, it's going to take you to the MyTel Document Center. That's where you're going to find the administration administration guide for the system, which is actually I have pulled up here, showed you earlier. 600 pages long. You can do search and find pretty much anything you want to do in this manual. Other manuals, quick reference guides are, as well, are, are available here in the MyTel Document Center. The maintenance tab is pretty much the last tab I'll go over today. Because like I said, we're just trying to get you on the basics and how to administer the basic functionality of your phone system. Dashboard is where the page we start at login, right? Connectivity shows me the connectivity of my appliances across the network. Green is good, of course. Red means, hey, I've got a problem. I've got a connectivity problem. Yellow means unknown. Status and maintenance. If I go to status and maintenance and appliances, it shows me that what's going on with my gear. What's going on with my equipment on the network? It shows me here a Diacom 90. I've got, got a phone out of service. That could very well be a phone that's been unplugged and not in use, and we just haven't removed it from the system yet. Back in the administration tab under phone. You have to go back and remove that there to clear that error through that yellow icon but of course green is good air is kind of like a caution hey look at this red you've got a problem okay that concludes today's training session if you have any questions at all feel free to reach out to us